Let's read the scriptures for today. It's from Hebrews, uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. But encourage one another daily. Can everybody say daily? daily? But encourage one another daily as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. Encourage one another daily. By the way, the world doesn't need another critic, does it? We need to be people who go out of our way, if you look at the scripture correctly, to go out of our way to initiate honor towards one another. There's, there's so much pessimism, so many critics in this world. We need to be a, a church that learns how to encourage one another. And it says daily. And then if you were to go to chapter 10, verse 24 to 25, it says, let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Uh, the writer of Hebrews was writing to Christians who were suffering pretty intense persecution. And so the chapter of Hebrews, there's, uh, the, the book of Hebrews, there's a question about who actually wrote it. But he's writing to a church who would meet in a physical location who were going through some really terrible, terrible, difficult persecution times. And what I want you to see in those first uh, couple of scriptures there is really a bigger concept than just the, the idea of encouragement. It's something that the writer's trying to get across that's so vital when people are going through difficult times. Let me just pause right now. Are any of you going through some difficult times? And would you say that in our society we've been going through some difficult times and some challenges? But what he says, and there's, there's, the writer says two things in here as an indicator for what we need when we go through difficult times. And it has to do with our habits. It has to do with things that we do daily. It says in that first verse, encourage one another daily. The writer's trying to get across something like, you can't let this go on too much when you're going through any times, but especially difficult times, if you're not doing something as a daily, on the daily, you are going to open yourself up to, at the end of the verse, it says deceitfulness. You're going to open yourself up to something that is going to take away from your faith and something that's going to diminish your faith. And so we need to be in the practice to be doing what we're doing daily. I could use some encouragement daily. I don't know about you. And it also says in here in the inverse, if you go down, the writer's still trying to get across a burden. And in this burden, he says, don't do, uh, make the mistake of a bad habit of not getting together regularly. So he's talking about good habits and bad habits, things that you should do that will benefit you in your faith and things that if you don't do will begin to eat away at your faith. And, you know, the Bible's never meant to be used as a weapon. And so we don't weaponize scripture. We don't take this verse and say, how dare you not show up at church? That's not the point of it. The spirit of it is a lot deeper than that. The spirit of getting together and meeting together is the writer saying, this is so vital for your faith. You should want to. If you follow Jesus, you want to be with people who follow Jesus. And if you love Jesus, guess what? You're going to learn to love people. And so this is what he's trying to get across. The things that you do daily, the things that you do on a habit, they're so important in your life. So the other day when I was driving, uh, I was driving and, and I started to have these kind of like just really heavy feelings and thoughts. And so I picked myself up. And the way that I picked myself up was to praise Jesus. I began to just, I did a couple of things. I said, Lord, I'm just going to thank you. I'm going to think of some things that I'm going to really thank you for in my life. How many of us know there's at least something that we can thank God for today? We have, if we were deliberate and intentional, we could come up with a lot of things. And I was intentional about it. I said, okay, I'm feeling heavy. But I know by now that by habit, by discipline, the Bible says he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind, which is self-discipline, which means good habits, which means training ourselves to do the right things. So in that moment of weakness, I, was, I knew what to do. I needed to thank God. 
and I needed to praise God. And I want to say, just to be, keep it real, just because you thank him and praise him doesn't mean everything just disappears on you, right? And all the problems begin to just go away. But something in my spirit lifted, and I got this idea in my mind that that's what I needed to do to clear the cobwebs. It's like I needed to do that to clear the cobwebs. So I took that concept and I researched it a little bit and thought about what it might mean to clear the cobwebs because it stood out to me. And I came across this story. It's by Carlos Whitaker. And Carlos Whitaker is telling the story of a pastor in Panama. And the pastor in Panama is saying that they were going through, uh, they were holding revival services. And in the revival services, if you don't know, if maybe old school, you know it, new school, you might not understand the revival services, but these are services that can go on a long time. And this man was preaching his heart out, preaching his heart out. And, he, and, and at the end of the first night of the service, he looks up and a woman was coming down the aisle for prayer. And she gets to the front for prayer. And she looks to him and says, can you please pray for me? I have, I have cobwebs. It's the only way she could describe it. I have cobwebs. And I have a lot of them. And so he, he prayed for her. And he believed that God was going to deliver her from the things that was affecting her mind, the things that was affecting her spirit, the things that was weighing her down. And so the next night, in this revival, passionate service, and he's pouring his heart out in the message, and he looks up at the end of the service, and the same woman is coming down the aisle, and she gets to him, and he says, what would you like prayer for? And he says, she says, I would like prayer to get rid of the cobwebs. And he goes to remind her and says, but we prayed last night. And she said, I know we prayed last night, but I need you to pray again. Please pray that those cobwebs would go away. And so, of course, he prayed. And then the third night came. And it's a powerful revival service. He preached his heart out. Same woman comes down the aisle. Looks like she's got a spring in her step. Looks like she's got something lifted from her. And she gets to the front and she goes up to him and she says, I just need you to pray for the cobwebs, and she sto he stopped her, and he said, listen, I feel like I've been praying the wrong prayer for you. We shouldn't be praying to get rid of the cobwebs. We should be praying to kill the spider. And there was a cause to the cobwebs that she kept trying to sweep away, but there was something deeper in her life that needed to get rid of. How many people are getting tired of sweeping away cobwebs when we need God to just get rid of the spider? When we need God to just clear away the things that are in our minds. And listen, I feel incredibly optimistic. I feel incredibly positive about the future of our lives. Our lives as a church family, I feel super, super positive. I feel like we're going to enter a season. We are in a season that we're seeing more and more people stirred up about, about getting back into the good habits, about seeing what God wants to do. And, and, and I feel like from now, we, our anniversary service comes up at the beginning of June. That'll be our third anniversary. Can we thank God for three years of faithfulness that's coming? And I believe that we're going to have something to celebrate because God has been so faithful. But what I also believe is if we were honest, if we were honest with one another, we would admit to having some cobwebs in our lives still. And I think those things that are in our lives are from whatever it could be from pandemic. Just the fact that we've lived in two years of a habit-breaking type of thing, we're actually going through that crisis accelerated some of the things that were weak in our lives and began to expose some things. And I believe if you look at the corners of your mind, you might be honest and you would say, well, you know, during these last couple of years, I've got some cobwebs up. I'm pointing to the corners and I hope there isn't any cobwebs in this church. I don't know. We've been cleaning as hard as we can. I'm just believe. I, I know though that in these last two years, there's been some things in our lives. It could be from the difficulties. You went through one trial, and then you got into another trial. You went through seasons of loneliness, 
and hardships and physical battles and you look at it and honestly the thing that stands out to me the most today in a very simple message is I believe that over time some of us have lost the spiritual disciplines and habits you know you don't get close to God just by going through routine and rituals but you can begin to lose something when you let down the self-discipline and you start to go away from the things that God has taught us and he has taught us to thank him he's taught us to praise him he's taught us to pray and he's taught us to get together in fellowship and that's the way we can kill some spiders in our lives can we put up the definition the the pastor who shared the story gave a really interesting definition to it a spider is an agreement you made with a lie I want you to think about that just for a second in your life. A spider, if we're, we're using this analogy today, is something, it's an agreement you made with a lie. Have you ever caught yourself agreeing with a lie? Somebody said something to you, and you believed it so much that you began to think it was true. Somebody spoke it over to you. Maybe, it was, maybe it's a situation where you think it's too late for you. Maybe it's a situation where you've made so many mistakes, you begin to think it doesn't matter if I make another one. Maybe it's a situation where you feel like it's never going to change or turn, and it's good for somebody else, but it isn't good enough for me. Whatever the lie is that you've agreed with, that's the spider that you need to kill. And then he offers this definition of a cobweb. A cobweb is a medicator that brings false comfort to a lie. Anybody has some false comforts in your life? False, maybe binging some TV, and that's your false comfort because you just, maybe it's just you're scrolling endlessly on social media because the pain in the real world is hurting you so much, you've just decided, I'm just going to keep scrolling, and that's become a new habit in your life. Maybe it's, we know, and in, in, in what the Lord has delivered us from, that the drinking and the sex and all the other things that the world will put out there as comforters to the lies, they don't work for us as Christians or anyone, because really the truth is it's only through Jesus Christ that we find freedom and that we find delivery. Have you ever been honest enough with yourself to say, you know, I do what I do? Right now, I'm falling into some bad habits because actually I'm trying to comfort myself in a lie that I believe about myself. Because the truth is, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. The truth is that the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is in me. And I have the power in Christ to get rid of some lies that are creeping around in my mind and creeping around in my life. And I can believe Jesus for full and utter and complete deliverance. And I'm praying that for you, my brothers and my sisters. And you're coming out of a season of time. And it's, I'm telling you, it is universal. I'll talk to somebody, and I hear their story, and they're talking about their struggle, and I want to tell them, it's not just you. We're seeing this right across the board, so many different people. But guess what? God wants to renew us. God wants to renew our spirits. God wants to flood our hearts with new joy and new strength. Give us grace in our homes. Give us grace in our workplaces. Give us a fresh, fresh fire as they led us to in worship. And it comes from a couple of different things, but I would like to offer three of them. How do we get rid of these spiders? If we can put that slide up as well. How do we get rid of these spiders? First of all, we need to identify the lie and be honest about those comforters. You know, this might help one person, so I'm going to say it. After the service, maybe you should go home and just write it out. Just write down and say, I'm going to write down all the things that I, you know, it's one thing. God doesn't want us to fall in the trap of battling the same sin over and over again. That's not freedom. The Bible says he came to set us free and free indeed. And so it's not that he wants us locked into this eternal struggle with the same issues. Sweep away the cobweb. Cobweb comes back. Sweep away the cobweb. Sometimes you need a message like this to just stop and say, okay, what is it? that I'm really dealing with? What is it that's creeping in my life that I need to deal with 
so that I can shake away these cobwebs and get rid of the spider. And I think for some of us, it would be very helpful to go home and just write it out. Just get before the Lord and let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Don't edit the Holy Spirit. Just let it out and just say, you know what? I've been struggling with this. Maybe some of us are a little bit uh, short-tempered these days. And something gets to you and it's just like you lash out a little bit more. You, you, you're quicker. You've got an edge to you because there's something bothering you deep down inside. And so when something's going on, you've got this edge to you and you, you're quicker when you speak. And it's not really like you to be like this, but you're, you're kind of a little bit more sarcastic or you're a little bit more, you've got a little edge to you when you say something back. And the deceitfulness of being in a bad habit, right? So when I talked about at the beginning, we need to encourage one another. How often? daily. And so when you don't do that, there's things that begin to happen and we become off and we, our hearts get a tiny little bit harder and then it doesn't happen all at once, but the bad habits lead to something else. And then our hearts get a little bit harder and harder and it gets a little bit harder to love people. And you know what? Sometimes we find out that it is hard to love people and we realize sometimes that the problem is with us too. And so if you would just be honest with yourself and say, this, I'm feeling a little bit short about things. I'm getting frustrated. How many people know what that's about? I'm getting frustrated. I feel the stress. And you lash out. And sometimes people act up the most because they want people to know that they're being hurt. And you just need to be honest with yourself and just write it out and say, Lord, I, got, I, need, I don't want to just deal with cobwebs for the rest of my life. I want to get rid of some stuff. I want to walk in freedom. I want to know what it is to follow Jesus this way. And I believe I can have a sound mind. I believe I, can, I have not been given the spirit of fear. I've been given the spirit of love and of power and a sound mind. Can we say amen to that? It's what God wants to do in your life. And so I would encourage you to do that. How else can we get rid of it? Secondly, afraid of spiders? Ask someone else who isn't. How many people are afraid of spiders? Actual spiders. Ed, it's okay, man. We're here for you, bro. <laughs> when I was in Costa Rica one time, I took a picture of a cool-looking spider. But no, you don't like that idea? And then I went back, and I was like, oh, that was a tarantula. I got way too close to the tarantula. <laughs> Some people are afraid of spiders. I used to work on a construction site, big dude, and anytime a spider came, he screamed like he was a five-year-old girl. <laughs> and some people are afraid of spiders. They actually say, when you're trying to get rid of actual spiders, they say, go, if you're afraid of them, go get some professional help to come in and get rid of them for you. And you know what? This, this is how I would put it into words for us. There are things and there are spiders in our lives that can cause a lot of fear. And if you're afraid of them, you know what? Jesus isn't afraid of the things that we're afraid of. He doesn't, I know this is elementary, but I want you to hear it said this way. He's not afraid of the things that we're afraid of. He doesn't worry about the things that we worry about, but he does care about the things that are getting in the way. And if you would turn to someone who isn't afraid, you know, you can get out of the habit of turning to Jesus even when you are a Christian. You can begin to just, he's the last on your list because the coping mechanisms have got higher and higher. It's easier for you to go on social media. It's easier for you to just watch a bunch of TV. It's easy for you to just kind of escape it in whatever way you escape. But really what you need to do sometimes is just get rid of all that and spend some time saying, Jesus, I got some stuff in my life. You're the only one who can get rid of it. This is who I am. I got to be honest with you. Would you please come in and just get rid of all these spiders for me? Amen. And you need to turn to somebody who has the power. The Bible says, where there's light, the darkness flees. And so you need the light of Jesus to come into your life to get some renewal in your minds. How many people want renewed minds? Just everybody raise your hand just for the fun of it. Thank you. Because that way nobody feels left out. But this is my prayer for the church. We're coming out of pandemic. We're going to move into a beautiful season. I know there's going to be more hardships. This is an incredible time in history. It breaks my heart, brings me to tears to see what's happening in Ukraine. And to see refugees the other day, I see... The, last night I see this mother just sobbing because she was in a safe place, she thought. She loses her son in a bombing. And it breaks 
my heart, and I'm sure it breaks yours. And if we're not careful in these days, like it says in Hebrews, when you see the day approaching, if you lose the habit and the discipline of doing the things you're supposed to do, the, the fears and the worries and all the things that shouldn't be there will begin to collect. And before you know it, it's not the cleanest place in your mind. And you need to turn to Jesus. You need to go to him regularly. Regularly. And you know what? You also need to do it with each other. We need to be those who, if maybe you're afraid of something, but you need to turn to somebody who can say, listen, I'm afraid of this. Would you pray for me? You know, I have, Castle Church is like this loud statement that church still matters. And, and we're doing a lot of detoxing here at Castle if you're new to church. We, we, are, we understand very, very well how there could be a lot of church abuse, church manipulation, church this and church that. We understand it, and I have a heart for it. And I think if people, for, for people who are suffering uh, from those effects, and, and uh, I believe that it, this is not a message to say if you're home for a season or whatever, we're going to shame you here at Castle. We don't do that. But I do want to do the inverse, if you follow me. I do want to do the inverse. It is really important for us to get together. It is so important for us to be able to cheer each other on. It is so important for us to say, come on, you could do this. Even the more so as the day approaches, we need each other. You're going to go through seasons and times. Uh, Jesus didn't go to church for 40 days. Of course, he was fasting. But there's going to be seasons and times that your life changes here and there. But God wants you in a community. God wants you to grow so that the cobwebs don't add into your life. And that's why the writer of Hebrews says, as the day approaches, please make sure, don't get into a bad habit, get into a good habit. The good habit is that we get together and we encourage each other and we lift each other up and we tell each other, yes, you can, you can do it, you can make it. Can we say amen to that? So important. So important. Third thing is regular cleaning. If you want to get rid of the spiders in your life, if I've, I have a feeling as I'm preaching, people are identifying some things. Maybe, you're, maybe at this point you're identifying the cobwebs more than you are identifying the spiders. But I have a feeling that, that, that this does hit home for some people. And so I, I believe that one of the ways we get rid of the cobwebs and the spiders is the regular cleaning in our lives. Can I bring you back to some basics Can I bring you back to some basics? If over these last couple of years, you've let something just get a little bit harder in your heart, you've gotten a little bit, you took a step back from God in the middle of persecution, you took a step away, it's a dangerous spot, I'm calling you back by the grace of God to say, come on, let's get back to some regular cleaning in our lives. Let's get back to some regular, real, authentic times with just you and Jesus. Authentic genuine. God, I need you. You know how often we should be saying, God, I need you? Say it with me, daily. You know how often we should be looking out for other people? Daily. We should be getting into some regular cleaning. You know how often we should be worshiping Jesus? Should we be worshiping Jesus just one hour on a Sunday morning? Come on, church. We need to be worshiping. Like I did in that car when I felt the heaviest, I was, you didn't have to hear me sing. Good for you. Robinson, what are you laughing at, bro? I'm going to take your job one day. <laughs> take mine. We'll switch. But, we, but I sang. I sang. And that heaviness, God, I worship you. I thank you. Driving down Central Avenue in Greenville. Did you know that Central Avenue in Greenville can be a holy place? Do you know Boswell can be a holy place? Do you know downtown Norwich can be a holy place? Do you know Main Street can be a holy place? Fill in the blank of your address, and it could be a holy place. Your workplace can be a holy place. You just got to do it regularly. And when you stop doing it regularly, here's what's happ- what happens. It's like, I don't know, it's like when, when you're a student, and, and the teacher tells you to do an assignment a certain way, and then you go to do the assignment, and you go back to the teacher, and then you say it didn't work. And the teacher says, well, did you do what I said? No. Well, then that's why it didn't work. And that's what God is teaching us. He, you, we are... So prone to going back to God, to saying, hey, it's not working. And God wants to say to us, but did you do what I said regularly? Are you praying? Are you worshiping? 
Are you thanking God? Because you know what? The more you do that, the more light there is, and the spiders begin to go. And you're not dealing with cobwebs anymore. Your mind is renewed. Your spirit is stronger. Your faith is getting stronger. Your heart is full of Jesus. You're trusting God for things that you wouldn't trust before. I heard a Ukrainian pastor say, my, my daughter sent it to me. She's out in California now. And, and, and uh, Hillsong Church, they, they had this video clip from a Ukrainian pastor And the Ukrainian pastor, with his limited English, only knew how to say it this way. He said, we've always trusted God, but now we only trust God. And it's a shift in in something that we, you know, in persecuting persecution times, difficult times, trials, the good habits of your life really begin to surface, but so do the bad ones. And so if the bad ones surfaced, we need to admit it and be honest and say, God, we need some good habits. I need to regularly do this, like the writer of Hebrews said. I need to daily do this. I need to meditate on your word. I need to get back into what you've called me to do. This Ukrainian pastor said, we don't actually have a building right now. But I have been, he said, I've been reaching out to thousands of our church family. They've been reaching out. Why? Because they need what? Daily. Encouragement. 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 God wants to encourage you today. Can the musicians come forward and can we stand on our feet? We're going to have a moment here to pray. If I could give you kind of a summary of this word, this brief word this morning, is I believe that good habits, good habits will give you a clear mind and you will begin to experience the power of God in your life. Can we say amen to that? So if you've been letting some dust accumulate in your mind, and you've been letting things get a little bit messy. If you've been, here's a litmus test for you. If you've been getting a little bit short with people and you're getting frustrated inside and things are overwhelming you, I believe God wants to just, first of all, God's merciful. God's merciful. Castle Church, we just want to, we just want to keep it real authentic and genuine as much as we can. We're all in need of God's grace this morning. Amen? We all can probably recognize some places in our minds that we've been stuck a little bit. But praise God, it's like spring is coming. The seeds that have been planted in your life are going to be fueled by the power of God's promise. And you're going to see God begin to grow the wonderful things in your life that you've been expecting and waiting for so long. We go through seasons of dormancy, seasons of loneliness, seasons of challenge and trials and difficulties. But in every season, God is faithful. But in every season, God is powerful. And if you're afraid of the spiders in your life, I want to tell you this morning, I know somebody who's not afraid of anything in your life. And he has the power to set you free. He is the power to give you a renewed mind. Stop trying to comfort comfort yourself with the lie that you agreed with when the lie that you agreed with is just bringing you down. Here's the truth. Can I give you some simple truth? You are loved by Jesus. Here's the truth. You've never been left. Here's the truth. No matter how many mistakes you've made, even over these last couple of years, God's faithfulness is so good. God's, God wants to wash away the things that are affecting you. Things are affecting Just be honest. Some things are affecting you. And the way that they're affecting you, Jesus is speaking to your heart to say, they don't have to affect you anymore. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here to sweep away the spiders. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we, I just thank you so much for Castle. I thank you so much for those watching online and they're gathering with us in spirit. We understand, Lord, the weaknesses that different people have during this time. And Lord, if ever we've needed you, we need you now. And really and truly, if ever we've needed each other, we need each other now. Lord, I pray that you would give people some courage here today. I want to say that scripture again. You have not given us the spirit of fear. Can we say amen to that? You have not 
given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of self-discipline, of a sound mind. I pray, Lord, that you would help this church to get back to good habits, not just the motions, that's different, but good habits where we regularly seek you, we regularly turn to you, we regularly look to you for our deliverance. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, as people begin to identify lies and false comforts in their lives, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would deliver them. And I pray that there would be some cleaning going on, some renewing going on. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we all say amen? Amen. Let's sing this song together. you've spoken I'm already loved 